it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for November 2024. So we're wasting no time here in November. First of all, I just want to welcome you to November. We are going to go through a major change, a major transformation here this month. I am going to encourage you, if you haven't already, to listen to November's energy forecast, the overview, the intro that I put out so that you get a little bit of a rundown on what to expect, what's coming at us here in the 11th month. So, of course, I'm also going to recommend, if you haven't already, to download your November energy guide according to your zodiac sign. That is the energetic Bible that you need to have with you to stay ahead of the game, to do the work, to stay in alignment with the energies coming at us. Definitely a very affordable yet important investment that you should be making in yourself. This is your healing journey. We're going through a very potent, let's call it, portal of energies. And I would hate to see you sleep on yourself. Definitely not the time for that. So here on November 1st, not only are we kicking off a brand new energy, brand new life lesson, brand new chapter in our collective and individual lives, but we are wasting no time because we are actually having our very first astrological shift of the month, which happens to be the new moon in Scorpio. So the new moon in Scorpio popping off at nine degrees, 36 minutes of the sign. So within the first deacon, which means that this is relatively a brand new chapter. And considering the fact that last year's new moon in Scorpio was the event that we kind of ushered this new version of self in under. And of course, it didn't get anchored in until the new moon in Capricorn that we had early in 2024. That was the ending and the closure of the old version of self. So the new moon in Scorpio this year around at nine degrees, it makes sense that this is a brand new chapter because this is the first time that we're working with the new moon in Scorpio energies as the new version of self. So we are going to see the new moon reach its peak potency here at the nine degree at 847 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, there is a moon guide available for your downloading pleasure. If you want to do a deep dive into this new moon, there are also journal prompts. There's also a lot to learn in that November energy guide for this particular event as well. So if you download the moon guide, you're going to realize that we're water dominant. Water means that there's a cleansing period, there's a purging period, there is a purification period. And once all the gunk is kind of washed away, we get renewed, refreshed, rebirthed, resurrected in our soul, in our spirit, which of course the Scorpio energy rules over. And there is an interesting dynamic at play here under this new moon in Scorpio because we have a lot of pros happening, a lot of gentle nudges in the right direction. But one of the most interesting things that I think we got going on here under this moon event is the harmonization, the trine with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who of course is retrograde still. He will be going direct mid-month. Again, listen to November's overview in order to understand what's coming at us. Uh, he's still retrograde in this Pisces energy, but when I say that there is a lot of structural energies taking place, helping us with this particular shift, this is why. First of all, the structural aspect of who it is that we now are, this new version of self, there's a new resonance, new vibration, new frequency coming online that has a major impact to how it is that we're going to be operating. The actual structure of our DNA is changing. The actual structure of who it is that we are, how it is that we present ourselves to the world, changing. The actual structure of our materialistic realm, the physical realm that we wake up, that we navigate each and every single day, that is changing as well. Again, reminder, Saturn is closing out a 30 year chapter. He is all about karma. He is all about the roles and responsibilities that we have to boss up into. But again, he's retrograde. So the inner realm is being restructured first and foremost. And then once he goes direct again, mid month, we will have the ability to again, bring those changes out to play. And especially because Saturn goes direct just hours before the full moon takes place. And of course that full moon in Taurus is where we anchor in this new structure of our soul selves. 
So there's a lot going on. Not to mention, this new moon closes, officially slams the door on the eclipse energies that we've been sitting in since, no, well, technically since the beginning of September. I was going to say, you know, since the new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy, that's officially coming to an end. But we entered into eclipse energies with that full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces back in September. So we've been living in confusion in Delulu land since then. We've been veiled, eclipsed, if you will, from the truth, from the information, from the details that we need to know in order to understand what is ending, what is closing, what we have to bring to a finality point in order for us to be reborn. So there's definitely a lot happening. Now, let's talk about Scorpio energy for a second. The new moon being the dark phase of the moon, that is where things are born. Think about, you know, a little baby cooking in its mama, right? You're in the dark. Think about how our universe got created and happened in the dark. Think about a seed being planted. That seed sprouts in the dark, okay? So when we're talking about the transition from the caterpillar to the butterfly, that happens in the dark. And so we're sitting in the dark. We're sitting in the funk, if you will. There is no light. There is no illumination in the sky. We are sitting with ourselves. We are trusting our gut, trusting our intuition. We are examining the parts of our lives that aren't working, that need to come to an end, that we can't do anymore, that needs a closure, that needs a finality so that we can get to actually Pouring into building, creating, bringing things to life that are in resonance with this new version of self. And of course, we're going through this change, this transformation, if you will, through this new moon in Scorpio. So it's going to take a little bit of time. However, the change, the transformation has already begun. And so, you know, the Scorpio energy is a water sign. It's a fixed water sign. Thus, the soul, the spirit being affected. Thus, the emotional change and transformations taking place. And so, you know, we're dealing with the deep penetrating issues to our soul self. Scorpio energy is about what we truly desire, and of course, when we realize what we truly desire, we have to figure out the fears, the doubts, the insecurities that are preventing us from going after said desires. There is an element where we want to have connection to the people, to the world around us. Of course, one of the major topics and themes where Scorpio energy is concerned is intimacy. Break that word down for a second. Everybody thinks of intimacy as the sexual act with someone else. Couldn't be further from the truth. Let's break that word down. And what you get is in. To me, I see. You can only know someone else at the depth in which you've learned to know thyself. Thus why here in the year of eight, ruled over by Scorpio energy, ruled over by Pluto, ruled over by Mars, this is about the change and the transformation of us being able to know who it is that we are to heal thyself, to bring those creator abilities online. And so there is a level of intimacy that we have to reach within ourselves if that is the level of intimacy that we want to reach with other people. And we're talking about soul merging emotional connection, not the boom, boom, pow that your mind, your physical ego mind probably took you to. Either way, Scorpio energy is bossing up, having power and control over thyself, over thy mind over thy emotions because you have to be in control of those things or else those things are going to control you. This Scorpio energy is the transitional period about leaving the fragmented parts of the ego self behind in order to empower the parts of the higher self to take the lead. So a new moon is a new beginning. It's a fresh, clean start. And where Scorpio energy is concerned, this is the major shedding of the skin, so to speak, leaving the parts that are no longer working behind so that we can emerge as the phoenix rising from the pile of ash to a brand new perspective, a new level of consciousness, a new level of empowerment. So there's going to be a lot coming up within us that probably won't look good. It won't feel good. That's part of the birthing process. I don't know any mama that has ever pushed out a kid and said, oh, that was easy. That was fun, right? You gotta dig deep. 
you, you really get to know how strong you are in those particular situations. And the Scorpio season in particular is the birthing process of the higher version of self. So we're definitely moving through a very intense initiation period. If you do download the moon guide, which I highly recommend, you are going to realize that the cons, the tension point, the conflict points that are basically illuminating where we're going through growing pains, there are a few and they're super intense, lots of oppositions, which means that we're at a choice point with a lot of different energies. We have, you know, Pluto opposing Mars. We have Jupiter opposing Venus. We have Mercury opposing Uranus. And then the square that we're going to throw in there is Venus and Saturn. So, you know, those particular aspects definitely have their own jam. They're highlighting for us where it is that we're resisting being hard aligned, where we're resisting bossing up into our light, into our power, where we're resisting kind of bringing forth tough love life lessons that we've already learned, especially where relationships are concerned, where we're resisting bringing that information and knowledge into the present moment, where we're resisting integrating that information and knowledge. Why are we, we resisting it, you may ask? Well, because the ego programming doesn't want you to grow, doesn't want you to learn. It wants you to stay in a stagnant place of paralysis. And so this is why many of us have a hard time breaking away from the old and actually initiating new because the ego programming is stronger than the higher self programming. Thus, why we're doing the energy work, thus the ascension symptoms, thus the shadow work. So with Jupiter sitting across from Venus, well, again, we're failing to realize that we have learned similar lessons in the past, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned that we're failing to integrate in the here and now. What does that mean? Well, it means that you're likely going to be making the same mistakes again. If you don't wake up, if you don't in integrate that information and knowledge and actually do something about it. We have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, sitting directly across from Uranus, the Great Awakener. There's an opposition there. And, you know, that's our higher mind and our lower mind going at it, trying to find balance, trying to come into compromise so that we're not so reliant on the lower level e intellect, which is that ego programming, Mercury, again, relying on the information, the details, the facts of the physical realm. Uranus needs us to rise up in our awareness and our consciousness, allow the higher dimensions to download us with information and intellect. Not that we have an aha moment. Oh, that was fun. Oh, that's a good idea. But that we actually act upon. Again, integration is the name of the game. And then of course, with Venus squaring Saturn, we are kind of deluded at this particular point. We want a different day to day life. We want different people, places, and things. But at this particular juncture, we're just hoping for the best. We're failing to put into action what we have to do to remove the aspects of our current circumstances in order to create a space for the new aspects, the new dreams and goals and visions to actually have a place to be born into. So again, major growing pains with that heart space. So there's a huge list of positives and let me just say that I, I hope you do take the time to kind of run through them here. But Pluto, he rules over Scorpio season. He is the ruler over 2024 as the year of eight. He is at the 29th critical crisis karmic degree of Capricorn energy. And he has the stage as far as I'm concerned underneath this particular new moon event. I'm going to rattle off just a couple of aspects. Again, if you're interested in understanding how these particular aspects apply to your life, impact your area of your chart, definitely get that moon guide, jump over to my Patreon, watch the videos to understand how to locate these particular energies in your chart. But let me just say, there's a trine with Uranus. So there is a sudden epiphany, a sudden download on what it is that we have to change, what we have to transform in our physical realm, what we have to destroy, bring to a finality, an ending, a closure ASAP. OK, we have Neptune sextiling with Pluto that is changing the vision, the goal, the dream that the higher self now wants to bring online. We have Pluto sextiling with Venus, our heart space, our worth, our value, our long term plans. So there's going to be an intensity 
probably coming out of some harsh reality checks, some harsh realizations on where we got to shed or get off the pot, where we need to do more than sit around and hope and pray and wish and where it is that actual action is needed in order for us to change the game. Again, boss up into your creator abilities, be the creator of your realm and reality. And if you are currently looking at a situation and a circumstance that you don't like, that you don't enjoy, change your mind. And it will be a different situation and circumstance. Everybody talks about when is new earth arriving? New earth is within you. You can access it at any point, but it does require work, requires you to call yourself out on your shit, requires you to boss up over your mental plane, over your emotions. You can access new earth whenever you want. You just need to change your mind and change your emotions accordingly. So we definitely have a lot of intensities pushing us to do just that under this new moon in Scorpio. And again, this is a review of all the tough love life lessons that we've gone through, not allowing them to suffocate us instead to encourage us to rise up, to do better, and finally actually start being better.